There is a good chance that you have seen an organic food aisle at one of your local grocery stores. In fact, you may have even driven past a farmer's market where the organic food was sold. There is also a good chance that you kept right on walking or driving by. This is because many individuals do not eat organic foods. Despite the fact that organic foods are not consumed by most of us, they still come highly rated and recommended. In fact, many health-conscious individuals swear by them. Many claims that eating organic foods helps to promote lifelong health and happiness. Organic food consumption has increased in popularity over the years and that increase continues to rise at a relatively steady pace. If you are interested in eating organic foods, but if you have never done so before, you may be wondering what the benefits are. If so, please continue viewing on. When it comes to organic foods and their benefits, you will find an unlimited number of benefits. For starters, did you know that organic foods can help the environment? They can and this is a point that many do not take into consideration at first. Farmers who put pesticides in their fields and on their foods are not only putting consumers at risk but the environment at risk as well. Depending on which pesticides and other chemicals are used, the soil and other nearby areas can suffer damage. By eating organic foods, you are providing a small, yet still helping hand to help protect the environment. Another unique benefit to eating organic that many individuals do not think of right away is the assistance that is provided to organic farmers and organic food manufacturers. Right now, the number of organic food manufacturers is quite small and many are small to medium-sized businesses. The same can be said for farmers. The decision for many farmers and companies to go organic can be difficult and risky. Therefore, by purchasing organic foods, especially fresh fruits and vegetables, you can take comfort in knowing that you are helping many small to medium-sized farmers and organic food companies stay in business. Organic foods can also help to improve your body and health. In fact, organic foods may be able to help cleanse or detoxify your body from harmful chemicals. When you stop eating foods that are tainted with pesticides and other chemicals, your body will expel the current and remaining toxins from your body. This means that your body should be clean, chemical-free, and pesticide-free after a specific period of time. Of course, remember that you want to stay healthy. For that reason, if you decide to start eating organic foods, try to stay doing so. If you are a parent, one of the best ways to help ensure that your child has a happy and healthy life is to get them started on eating organic foods as early as possible. Another one of the many benefits to eating organic foods is the better quality. In fact, many individuals claim that organic food tastes much better. One reason why farmers claim to use potentially harmful pesticides and chemicals is to kill bacteria. While this does sound like a good idea, the bacteria that can be present when fruits and vegetables grow isn't necessarily bad. In fact, some say that it helps to foods grow in a certain way. This, apparently, in turn, helps to produce better results, which should better tasting, more natural food. As you can see, there are a number of benefits to eating organic foods. In fact, the preceding mentioned benefits are just a few of the many reasons why organic food should be given a close examination. If you would like more information on organic foods, including the benefits of eating them, consider speaking with a professional healthcare provider, like your doctor. He or she can help you decide if switching to organic foods is the right decision. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Do you know the health benefits of eating fish? If you don't know, then this video is for you since there are many health benefits of eating fish. Fish is among the healthiest foods on the planet. It's loaded with important nutrients, such as protein and vitamin D. Fish is also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are incredibly important for your body and brain. Supported by research, these are the healthy benefits of eating fish. 1. 
High in important nutrients. Fish is packed with many nutrients that most people are lacking. This includes high quality protein, iodine, and various vitamins and minerals. Fatty species are sometimes considered the healthiest. That's because fatty fish, including salmon, trout, sardines, tuna, and mackerel, are higher in fat-based nutrients. This includes vitamin D, a fat-soluble nutrient that many people are lacking. Fatty fish also boast omega-3 fatty acids, which are crucial for optimal body and brain function and strongly linked to a reduced risk of many diseases. To meet your omega-3 requirements, eating fatty fish at least once or twice a week is recommended. If you are a vegan, opt for omega-3 supplements made from microalgae. 2. May help prevent and treat depression. Depression is a common mental condition. It's characterized by low mood, sadness, decreased energy, and loss of interest in life and activities. Although it isn't discussed nearly as much as heart disease or obesity, depression is currently one of the world's biggest health problems. Studies have found that people who eat fish regularly are much less likely to become depressed. Numerous controlled trials also reveal that omega-3 fatty acids may fight depression and significantly increase the effectiveness of antidepressant medications. Fish and omega-3 fatty acids may also aid other mental conditions, such as bipolar disorder. 3. Contribute to a healthy heart and brain. Eating fish is an important source of omega-3 fatty acids. These essential nutrients keep our heart and brain health. Two omega-3 fatty acids found in fish are EPA acid and DHA acid. Our bodies don't produce omega-3 fatty acids so we must get them through the food we eat. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in every kind of fish but are especially high in fatty fish. Some good choices are salmon, trout, sardines, herring, canned mackerel, canned light tuna, and oysters. 4. It helps improve vision and eye health. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality found that omega-3 fatty acids are beneficial to improving vision and eye health. This is because the brain and eyes are heavily concentrated in omega-3 fatty acids and need them to maintain their health and function, according to the AHRQ's findings. Fish is one of the best sources of these good fats. 5. It can help you sleep better. If you have trouble falling or staying asleep, eating more fish may do the trick. According to a study published by the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine, increased consumption of fish improved quality of sleep for most subjects. Researchers suspect that this is due to fish's high concentration of vitamin D, which aids in sleep, according to the study. 6. It helps alleviate rheumatoid arthritis. If you suffer from rheumatoid arthritis, which is a chronic inflammation of your joints, eating more fish can help alleviate the swelling and pain. The American College of Rheumatology found that higher consumption of fish actually lowers disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis. 7. It decreases the risk of heart failure. Fish has a very heart-healthy reputation and for good reason. A study conducted by the Division of Aging at Brigham and Women's Hospitals Department of Medicine showed that moderate consumption of fish will help lower risk of heart failure, due to its high concentration of heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. 8. May help a healthy pregnancy. DHA, an essential fatty acid in fish plays a huge role in the health of a growing fetus, contributing heavily to the development of a baby's brain and central nervous system. The mother is the sole source of omega-3 fats for the developing fetus and exclusively breast-fed infant, and the best direct source for the mom comes from eating fish and seafood. It is important for pregnant women to eat fish in moderation, and make sure they're choosing fatty fish low in mercury and other harmful substances. 9. May boost your brain power. The omega-3 fatty acids fish contains, especially EPA and DHA, are a necessary component of the human brain, playing a vital role in a variety of cognitive functions. Consuming EPA and DHA support the health of the brain at all stages of life, says Christy Nays, a registered dietitian with the Heart's Kitchen. 
It is beginning to become clear that low DHA status may be a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia, and with cognitive impairment associated with aging. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for low-cost healthy living. Do you know the medicinal properties of tea tree oil? If you don't know, then this video is for you. Tea tree oil has various uses in first aid treatments because of its triple antibiotic features, it's an antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal agent. The oil's first aid uses are fairly straightforward because we all know what to expect from a first aid treatment, we know we can use the substance to sanitize, heal cuts and wounds, and ease pain. A chronic condition is more complex. It's common to hear someone with a chronic disease, such as acne, asthma, or a yeast infection for example, say that such and such a remedy worked at first, or was effective for a while, and then the problem came back. Or maybe the symptoms were lessened but never completely disappeared. That's because many of the organisms responsible for these conditions occur naturally in our environments, or in our own bodies, and are kept in balance until something causes the balance to shift and the organisms to experience overgrowth. That's when we experience a severe acne outbreak, an asthma attack, or the symptoms of yeast infection. In order to effectively treat the chronic condition, we have to recreate the state of balance, or in other words, we have to treat the root of the imbalance. It is believed that in many cases this can be accomplished through the use of tea tree oil along with dietary changes. Feeling cold coming on or you sense the onset of a cold sore, simply apply tea tree oil to your temples, throat, and chest or whenever you feel the aches or the cold sore coming on, ingest a cough drop containing minute amounts of tea tree oil, and eliminate sugar from your diet. Also buy a bag of oranges and eat them freely, drink plenty of water, and get a few extra hours of sleep at night or by napping during the day. Also, a steamy hot bath with a few drops of tea tree oil in it works wonders. These things will usually return to your good health. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Did you know that arthritis exercises are beneficial for relieving pain and joint stiffness? Arthritis exercises and stretching can be particularly helpful during a flare. People with arthritis who exercise may find that they have less pain than those who do not. Exercise can reduce painful symptoms, improve joint function and flexibility, increase range of motion and boost mood. A recommended 30-minute minimum of daily activity is the norm. Before starting any exercise program, it is vital that one speak to their doctor to ensure there are no unseen risks, however, you will find that most doctors recommend exercise for their arthritis patients either on their own initiative or when asked. The types of exercises suggested vary, however, with all types of exercise the warm-up is the starting point. Warming up is best started with applying warm compresses to the joints, followed by mild stretching. The range of motion exercises, such as dance, is a very good start, as are low-impact aerobics. These can relieve stiffness and increase flexibility. Never discount the effectiveness of walking as an exercise. Walking is a great exercise to improve the arthritic condition, and carrying weights as light as one pound and using your arms as you walk can involve the whole body. The trick is to make walking interesting enough as an exercise to stay motivated. Try walking in different settings, alternating walking with dance on different days, and of course including a partner can be much more interesting than going at it alone. Using aquatics, exercising in a pool is a great way to exercise as well. Water is an excellent aid because it provides resistance that builds muscle in the entire body while reducing shock to the joints at the same time. 
Additionally, because the whole body tends to become involved in aquatic exercise the added benefit of cardiovascular exercise is enjoyed. If at all possible, find a heated pool to work out in. Warm water is soothing to the joints and will cause the blood vessels to dilate, increasing circulation. With that in mind, it is often beneficial to add using a spa to your regimen, perhaps after your workout, in order to provide some soothing jets of water to your muscles and even more help with increased circulation, which is always vital when dealing with arthritis. If you still want more variety, you may want to try yoga. Yoga is a general term for several stretching and pose-oriented exercises originating in India and is extremely beneficial toward achieving flexibility and reducing stress physically and mentally. There are gentle forms of yoga such as Hatha Yoga that are excellent to start with. Hatha Yoga comprises of gentle stretches and simple poses that help flexibility and balance and are easy to learn and enjoy. Check your local activities paper or section of your local paper to see if there are any yoga classes near you. Even when you cannot make it out to walk or to an aquatics or yoga class, there are exercises you can do daily to improve flexibility, strength, and conditioning. You can flex your legs while sitting in a chair facing forward, simply by moving your leg outward while keeping your foot on the floor and holding it there for a few seconds, then retracting it until your foot is behind you, then alternating to the other leg. Interlocking your fingers and slowly flexing your wrists to the left and the right for a few minutes a day can help tremendously to increase flexibility and reduce pain in the wrist area. For your upper back, you can stand upright in front of a table, then lean over and place your hands on the table and tuck your chin back toward your collarbone. Once positioned as such, lift your upper back upward and simultaneously take a deep breath. Hold that position for 5 to 10 seconds and then relax while exhaling. While doing this, lower your spine slowly as you move both shoulder blades forward as if toward each other. Repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 repetitions. For the shoulders and middle back, start again from an upright position standing as straight as you can, reach back and lock the fingers of both hands together. Breathe slowly and deeply and lift upward with your shoulders while at the same time, exhaling. Be sure to keep your chest up and your chin in. Repeat this for about 10 to 15 sets. For the shoulders and upper chest, choose a free corner of the room to stand in and place your hands on the opposite sides of the corner. Take a step back about 18 inches from the corner. You now should be facing the corner directly with your hands on both of the walls with your body some distance from the wall itself. Keeping your chest up after inhaling, lean in toward the corner while exhaling. Repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 sets. Whatever exercise program you choose, be sure to breathe properly when exercising. Oxygenation is important to any exercise regimen as it promotes a healthy heart rate and reduces fatigue. Additionally, oxygenation helps circulation, which is vital to achieving the flexibility and strength that you are trying to achieve in battling arthritis. Also, listen to your body. It is natural to feel a little fatigue and soreness when starting a new exercise regimen, however, if the pain of soreness persists for more than one hour, or you have a decrease in mobility that lasts longer than an hour, then the regimen should be reduced until the soreness desists. Also, look for signs of increased swelling of joints or any persistent increase of weakness, these are signs of activities that are too strenuous and a reduction in activity will be necessary. Just remember to take all new exercise regimens slowly at the start. The idea is to increase flexibility not to train for the Olympics. There are three main types of exercises to include in a basic exercise program. Range of motion exercises. These lessen stiffness and help with improving flexibility. Range of motion refers to the area within which the joints move naturally or on a daily basis. Although these range of motion exercises can be performed every day, it is recommended that they are done at least every other day. Strengthening exercises. There are two types of strengthening exercises, isometric or tightening the muscles without moving the joints, and isotonic, moving of the joints for strengthening muscle movements. It is recommended to do these sets of exercises every other day unless you are suffering from more than mild joint pain or swelling. 
Endurance exercises. The objective of this is to increase stamina. They also help with improving your inner personal, mental strength and improving weight control and sleep. Some of the most popular endurance exercises are stationary bike riding, walking, and water exercising. And unless you are suffering from more than mild joint pain or swelling, a 20-30 minute workout or 2-3 short 10 minute bouts during the day is what is recommended, an average of 3 times each week. Be kind to your body, and it will be kind to you. Arthritis Exercise Tips Let's sum up arthritis exercise with a few tips for all. 1. Establish your own unique, exercise program so that it meets your personal health needs, budget, and environment. Make sure it is safe by checking with your own professional healthcare advisor and workout trainer. And take it slow and steady like Aesop's turtle in the race. 2. Be kind to yourself. Stop if something hurts. And experiment with applying heat before exercising and warming up. Then cool off afterward with cold packs. 3. Enjoy exercising by making it a real part of your life during the week. Include range of motion, strengthening and endurance exercises in your routines. And vary your activities, try a new class at a health club one quarter. Next time, go elsewhere or join a naturalist group for weekly hikes in local parks. Keep an active folder with pockets of gyms and health clubs near you with their schedules and updated classes and coupon specials. And check newspapers, local bulletin boards, postings at the gyms and clubs, etc. for healthy activities like walk-a-thons and bike-a-thons for non-profits and evening, weekend hikes in which you can participate. You'll meet new friends, have fun, get out more and exercise all at the same time. 4. Exercise activities are available all around you, too. No need to spend time and money elsewhere. You can borrow exercise videos, cassettes, DVDs and books from public libraries. You can get active by washing windows, cleaning your house, car, pet, children's closets, your closets, anything. You can even earn money doing activities like walking and distributing flyers, local newspapers and coupons. Check with companies who place these in and around your mailbox and door, they often need help. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified of the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for low-cost healthy living. Would you like to know the amazing benefits of taking Manuka honey? This video will show you the life-changing benefits of taking Manuka honey regularly. Manuka honey is used as a natural ointment for wounds of all kinds. It has been hailed as a go-to germ fighter in an age of resistance to conventional antibiotics. Proponents also claim that Manuka honey can treat other conditions from acne to sinus issues. Manuka honey hasn't been used very long as a traditional remedy. It's the product of the New Zealand scrub plant that gives it its name. European honey bees introduced it to the area in the early 19th century. When bees pollinate from this plant, their honey is more potent than standard honey bee honey. This is because it has a higher concentration of methylglyoxal MGO. These are the benefits of Manuka honey when taken regularly. 1. Improves the appearance of skin and fights acne. There are several reasons Manuka honey is a beneficial additive to your skin care routine. When it comes to healing superficial wounds, including those from acne, research has reported its hydrogen peroxide and compounds like methylglyoxal work to kill pathogens, including antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which, in turn, speeds up the healing process. Its antibacterial effect keeps pores clean from bacteria to prevent acne. Manuka honey can improve your skin's appearance by balancing its pH level and encouraging the exfoliation of dead skin cells to keep your skin clear. Its anti-inflammatory properties are also beneficial for decreasing localized inflammation from acne. You can use Manuka honey as a cleanser by applying directly to the face, massaging all over for a couple of minutes before rinsing. 2. Improves sleep. 
Manuka honey may also help you sleep more soundly. The honey encourages the release of melatonin, according to some experts. This hormone is released during sleep and helps maintain the body's natural rhythms. Add a teaspoon of manuka honey to a warm glass of milk and drink each night before bed for best results. 3. Boosts Immunity Researchers reported in the Journal of Leukocyte Biology that components of the honey can stimulate immune cells, increasing the body's ability to fight off hostile intruders like bacteria and viruses. The honey is also especially effective against the sore throat causing bug, Streptococcus suggests research published in the journal Microbiology. 4. Prevents Cancer Manuka honey was shown to hinder the growth of skin, colon, and breast cancers, in studies done on mice, according to research published in the online medical journal PLOS ONE. It can even help mitigate the side effects of chemo, the researchers report. Another study published in Evidence-Based Complementary Medicine discovered that Manuka honey's anti-mutagenic, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory qualities help prevent cancer. It's important to note that more research needs to be done on Manuka's honey's benefits and these claims. 5. Cures MRSA the superbug found in hospitals and gyms over the past several years, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus MRSA, seems to respond to Manuka honey. According to UK researchers from Cardiff Metropolitan University in the United Kingdom, it interferes with one of the strongest genes of the MRSA bacteria, preventing the infection spread. Manuka honey can inhibit the growth of these biofilms in the laboratory, giving it the potential to control superbug infections such as MRSA, says researcher Rose Cooper, PhD in a university press release. It will inhibit MRSA by stopping cells from dividing, which makes it such an interesting product to work with. For most people, Manuka honey is safe to consume. There's usually no limit on how much Manuka honey you can ingest. But if you have diabetes, talk to your doctor before adding Manuka honey to your regimen. Manuka honey, as with other honey, has a high sugar content. This may cause a spike in your blood sugar levels. What to look for when buying Manuka honey? Manuka honey is widely available online and in some health food stores. When making your purchase, it's important to understand exactly what you're getting as not all Manuka honey is the same. This type of honey is often labeled as active manuka honey, which can be misleading. This term refers to the antibacterial effects produced by hydrogen peroxide. These antibacterial effects are found in all types of honey. To guarantee the unique healing properties of manuka honey, look for a reference to non-peroxide antibacterial activity NPA, or a UMF rating. The UMF rating measures the amount of NPA present in the honey. Also stick to brands that contain MGO, methylglyoxal a naturally occurring compound that makes Manuka honey so special, the unique antibacterial factor in Manuka honey. The more MGO, the better. To get the benefits of Manuka honey, you need the real thing. Check the label to make sure the honey comes from New Zealand, and has a UMF unique manuka factor rating of 10 plus or more. Be prepared for sticker shock, but don't be swayed by cheaper versions, there's no guarantee the knockoffs have the same healing properties. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Do you suffer from constant headaches or migraines? If you do, you may be looking to seek relief. With that being said, even if you only occasionally suffer from headaches or migraines, you may still be seeking fast relief, but in a natural way. For natural ways to relieve the pain and discomfort associated with migraines and headaches, the following foods will give relief if taken frequently. Grapes are a great and natural way to seek relief from a headache or a migraine. When it comes to using grapes to seek relief, there are a number of different steps that can be taken. For natural consumption, just eat a bowlful of ripe grapes. 
Another approach involves just drinking the juice, as the juice is what provides the relief. With this approach, squish or grind a few grapes and drink the juice. In keeping with what is consumed, it is important to eat a proper diet. Diet is not only an ideal way to help get over a migraine quicker, but it is also a way to reduce your chances of suffering from one. A well-balanced diet is key to staying happy and healthy. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, honey, yogurt, and milk are advised. In fact, one other natural remedy for headaches that comes highly recommended is eating a fresh apple each morning. Water is also key to reducing the average time frame of a headache or a migraine. As with a healthy diet, the regular consumption of water can help to prevent the onset of headaches and migraines. In addition to drinking plain water, another home and natural remedy for headaches and migraines that comes recommended is that of honey. Many headache and migraine sufferers report a decrease or complete elimination in pain when drinking a glass of water with a teaspoon of honey. A cold compress can also and should be used to help treat a migraine or a headache. A Ziploc bag filled with ice or a cold washcloth can be used. Although a cold compress is an ideal way to seek relief from a headache or a migraine, there are also individuals who claim that heat provides them with assistance. If you would like to try this approach, start with warm washcloths or towels around the neck and armpits. Those who have the option to do so are encouraged to sleep when they develop a painful headache or migraine. Although sleep may not provide permanent relief, the temporary relief is still preferred by many. Even if sleep is not possible, like if you are a parent who is at home with your child, stay in a dark room. Light can often complicate a headache, especially a migraine. This can make the pain much worse or even unbearable for many. For that reason, those suffering from migraines are encouraged to limit their exposure to household lights, sunlight, television, and computer screens. Headaches, especially migraines, can be debilitating. Some sufferers are unable to continue on with their daily activities. If this describes you and if you have tried the above-mentioned natural and home remedies for migraines without success, you may want to consider contacting a healthcare professional. As nice as it is to stay natural, it is important to be able to complete your daily tasks, especially if you are employed or a parent. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for low-cost healthy living. Do you know the health benefits of avocado? If you don't know, then this video is for you because there are many health benefits of eating an avocado. Avocado is an evergreen, tropical tree with green, pear-shaped, nutrient-dense fruit. While they aren't sweet, avocados are a satisfying and versatile food with a creamy, buttery texture. And they have a rich flavor from the high fat content too. These are the health benefits. 1. Avocados are nutrient-rich. According to the USDA National Nutrient Database, one serving one-fifth of an avocado, approximately 40 grams, contains 64 calories almost 6 grams of fat, 3.4 grams of carbohydrate less than a gram of sugar and almost 3 grams of fiber. Avocados are a great source of vitamins C, E, K, and B6, as well as riboflavin, niacin, folate, pantothenic acid, magnesium, and potassium. They also provide lutein, beta-carotene, and omega-3 fatty acids. Although most of the calories in an avocado come from fat, don't shy away. Avocados are full of healthy, beneficial fats that help to keep you full and satiated. When you consume fat, your brain receives a signal to turn off your appetite. Eating fat slows the breakdown of carbohydrates, which helps to keep sugar levels in the blood stable. Fat is essential for every single cell in the body. Eating healthy fats supports skin health, enhances the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients, and may even help boost the immune system. 2. Avocados help you lose weight. A half cup of guacamole has about 6 grams, almost one quarter of your daily fiber needs. 
Fiber helps you feel full, so you're less likely to overeat. And although avocados are high in fat, it's mainly healthy monounsaturated fat. Research has found that this type of fat in your diet can help trim your waistline. Instead of chicken salad with mayo, try chickpeas with mashed avocado. 3. Avocados are loaded with fiber. Fiber is another nutrient that avocados are relatively rich in. It's indigestible plant matter that can contribute to weight loss, reduce blood sugar spikes and is strongly linked to a lower risk of many diseases. A distinction is often made between soluble and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is known for feeding the friendly gut bacteria in your intestine, which are very important for optimal body function. A 3.5 ounce 100 gram serving of avocado packs 7 grams of fiber, which is 27% of the RDA. About 25% of the fiber in avocado is soluble, while 75% is insoluble. 4. Avocados are good for your heart. Speaking of your blood vessels, the American Heart Association recommends that the majority of the fat you eat be unsaturated, like you'll find in avocados, rather than the saturated fats in foods like red meats and whole milk dairy foods. Early research now shows that avocados in particular can also help lower bad cholesterol, triglycerides, and blood pressure. 5. Avocados strengthen bones. On average, people eat half an avocado at a time. That gives an adult 15% of their daily vitamin K needs. This nutrient may help improve bone density and prevent fractures. Toss avocado pieces into a spinach salad with salmon, tuna, or egg for even more vitamin K along with vitamin D, another nutrient that's essential for bone health. 6. Avocados help fight cancer. Avocados have oleic acid, a monounsaturated fatty acid also found in olive oil and nuts that can slash the odds of breast cancer, according to a study of more than 4,000 women. And a compound in avocados called avocatin B can kill leukemia cells, according to a lab study. Scientists are even looking into whether the papery husks that surround avocado pits have anything helpful. 7. Avocados will boost your immune system. Glutathione is a powerful antioxidant associated with immune system health. A 2000 report in the journal Proceedings of the Nutrition Society stated, the immune system works best if the lymphoid cells have a delicately balanced intermediate level of glutathione. Avocados are a good source of this substance, according to American National University. 8. Avocados will help keep your skin healthy. The vitamin C and vitamin E in avocados help keep skin nourished and glowing, according to the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State University. Avocado and B12 cream may be useful in treating psoriasis, according to the University of Maryland Medical Center. How to select and store avocado. Avocados are best eaten when they are perfectly ripe. To achieve this, leave them at room temperature for anything up to a week and feel them gently from time to time. When ripe, avocados should feel slightly soft when you apply some pressure. A firm avocado will ripen in a paper bag over a couple of days or by putting them next to a banana in the fruit bowl. Avocados should not be put in the fridge until they are ripe. Once opened, you can squeeze lemon juice on the flesh to protect it from browning. Avoid those which are overripe with brown, fibrous flesh as it will taste bitter and mushy and is an indication of rot. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Would you like to know the amazing benefits of green tea? The green tea plant contains a range of healthy compounds that make it into the final drink. It can be enjoyed hot, cold or even in powdered form and it's recognized for its high antioxidant content and health benefits. This video, therefore, will present to you the amazing health benefits of green tea. These are the following benefits. 1. May improve brain function. 
Green tea does more than just keep you alert, it may also help boost brain function. The key active ingredient is caffeine, which is a known stimulant. It doesn't contain as much as coffee, but enough to produce a response without causing the jittery effects associated with taking in too much caffeine. Caffeine affects the brain by blocking an inhibitory neurotransmitter called adenosine. This way, it increases the firing of neurons and the concentration of neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine. Research has consistently shown that caffeine can improve various aspects of brain function, including mood, vigilance, reaction time, and memory. However, caffeine isn't the only brain-boosting compound in green tea. It also contains amino acid L-theanine, which can cross the blood-brain barrier. L-theanine increases the activity of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, which has anti-anxiety effects. It also increases dopamine and the production of alpha waves in the brain. Studies show that caffeine and L-theanine can have synergistic effects. This means that the combination of the two can have particularly powerful effects in improving brain function. Because of the L-theanine and the small dose of caffeine, green tea may give you a much milder and different kind of buzz than coffee. Many people report having more stable energy and being much more productive when they drink green tea, compared with coffee. 2. Increases fat burning. If you look at the ingredients list for any fat burning supplement, chances are, green tea will be on there. This is because, according to research, green tea can increase fat burning and boost metabolic rate. In one study involving 10 healthy men, taking green tea extract increased the number of calories burned by 4%. In another involving 12 healthy men, green tea extract increased fat oxidation by 17%, compared with those taking a placebo. However, some studies on green tea don't show any increase in metabolism, so the effects may depend on the individual and how the study was set up. Caffeine may also improve physical performance by mobilizing fatty acids from fat tissue and making them available for use as energy. 3. Antioxidants may lower the risk of some cancers. Cancer is caused by uncontrolled growth of cells. It's one of the world's leading causes of death. Research has shown that oxidative damage can lead to chronic inflammation, which can lead to chronic diseases, including cancers. Antioxidants can help protect against oxidative damage. Green tea is an excellent source of powerful antioxidants. Research has linked green tea compounds with a reduced risk of cancer, including breast cancer, prostate cancer and colorectal cancer. Many observational studies indicate that green tea drinkers are less likely to develop several types of cancer, but more high-quality research is needed to confirm these effects. To get the most health benefits, avoid adding milk to your tea. Some studies suggest it can reduce the antioxidant value in some teas. 4. May protect the brain from aging. Not only can green tea improve brain function in the short term, it may also protect your brain as you age. Alzheimer's disease is a common neurodegenerative disease and the most common cause of dementia in older adults. Parkinson's disease is another common neurodegenerative disease and involves the death of dopamine-producing neurons in the brain. Several studies show that the catechin compounds in green tea can have various protective effects on neurons in test tubes and animal models, possibly lowering the risk of dementia. 5. May help prevent type 2 diabetes. The rates of type 2 diabetes are increasing in recent decades. Type 2 diabetes involves having elevated blood sugar levels, which may be caused by insulin resistance or an inability to produce insulin. Studies show that green tea may improve insulin sensitivity and reduce blood sugar levels. One study in Japanese individuals found that those who drank the most green tea had an approximately 42% lower risk of type 2 diabetes. 6. May reduce bad breath. The catechins in green tea also have benefits for oral health. Test tube studies suggest that catechins can suppress the growth of bacteria, potentially lowering the risk of infections. Streptococcus mutans is a common bacterium in the mouth. 
It causes plaque formation and is a leading contributor to cavities and tooth decay. Studies indicate that the catechins in green tea can inhibit the growth of oral bacteria in the lab, but no evidence shows that drinking green tea has similar effects. However, there's some evidence that green tea may reduce bad breath. Now, what about you? Do you have experiences on green teas? Please share so we will know. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Everyone experiences anxiety. In fact, being unable to do so can be a sign of a serious psychological problem. In our hazardous world, anxiety is a strategy the body uses to help the mind recognize danger and keep well out of its way. As with most mental illnesses, it's not the presence of anxiety alone that creates problems. It is more about how severe it is and how much it gets in one's way of life or quality of living. Most people feel anxious at some time in their lives. However, only about 5% of people experience severe anxiety and rarely seek professional help. Anxiety is a mixture of physical and mental symptoms. They are part of what psychologists call the fight-or-flight response. When the body is under threat it automatically prepares either to defend itself or run. Anxiety is a normal reaction to stress. It helps one deal with a tense situation in the office, study harder for an exam, or remain focused on an important speech. In general, it helps one cope with the tasks and demands of everyday life. But when anxiety becomes an excessive, irrational dread of everyday situations, it can become a disabling disorder. Fortunately, effective treatments for anxiety disorders are available, and research is yielding new and improved therapies that can help most people with anxiety disorders lead productive and fulfilling lives. However, studies have shown that having a healthy diet may reduce signs and symptoms of anxiety. Although food can't cure an anxiety disorder, consider some diet changes and that would benefit a severely anxious person, avoid or limit caffeine intake as much as possible. Caffeine is present in many soft drinks, not just in tea and coffee and it can set up its own vicious cycle. It can speed up heart rate and disrupt sleep which later on become prevailing signs of anxiety. Trying to overcome tiredness by drinking more caffeine only makes the long-term problem worse. Avoid too much alcohol. Similarly, alcohol can worsen the symptoms of anxiety and disrupt sleep. Many people reach for a drink to calm their nerves, but the consequences of overindulgence can outweigh the benefits of initial relaxation. For some, a hangover, insomnia, and dehydration make one feel worse than before one had a drink. In excessive amounts, alcohol can actually act as a depressant, making the drinker feel sluggish or more anxious. Alcohol, like a simple sugar, is rapidly absorbed by the body. Like other sugars, alcohol increases hypoglycemia symptoms. It also causes mood swings. Eat complex carbohydrates, also known as carbs. During anxious times, turn to comforting carbs. These foods act as a mild tranquilizer by increasing the amount of serotonin, a calming neurotransmitter in the brain. Complex carbs such as potatoes, whole wheat bread, and pasta take longer to digest than sugary simple carbs like white bread. That way, one can stay fuller longer and blood sugar is likely to stay steady, eliminating stress and anxiety. Be sure to drink 8 or more glasses of water a day. Dehydration can lead to fatigue, headaches and stress. One should be well hydrated and drinking lots of water a day can decrease symptoms of anxiety. Take multivitamins and mineral supplements. B vitamins, whose role is to unlock the energy in food, are crucial. Vitamin B6 helps manufacture serotonin in the brain. Choose a daily supplement that supplies 100% of the daily recommendation of all vitamins and minerals. Although tension and daily stresses are unavoidable, one can relieve tension and manage stress and anxiety better by watching out for what one eats and what one does not eat. 
Remember that a healthy body and a healthy mind are often one and the same thing. So, if you learn something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. What is smoking doing to your body? Do you know that cigarette smoking harms nearly every organ of the body, causes many diseases and reduces the health of smokers in general? Please proceed on viewing this video so the above questions can be answered. Smoking is the cause of many diseases and kills about 442,000 people every year in the United States. In spite of anti-smoking campaigns and billboard warnings, more and more people are joining the bandwagon of smokers every year. Out of the total number of new smokers, 90% are children and adolescents, replacing smokers who have quit or died early due to a disease caused by smoking. Smoking is the top cause of preventable and premature deaths, followed by obesity. Smoking not only increases the risk of lung disease but also increases the risk of contracting lung cancer, oral cancer, emphysema, stroke and heart disease. Certain statistics by the American Lung Associations show alarming results. Over 5,000 adolescents smoke their very first cigarette every day, out of which over 2,000 turns into regular smokers. Presently there are nearly 5 million adolescent smokers. 20% of the 12th graders smoke cigarettes regularly. Smoking has many harmful effects on the health of a human being. It damages the cardiovascular system, causes high blood pressure, increases heart rate, increases the risk of ischemic stroke, increases the risk of formation of blood clot formation, and decreases the oxygen amount which reaches the tissues in the body, reduces coronary blood flow and cardiac output, and damages the blood vessels. Smoking not only affects physical health, but mental health too. It causes psychological distress and depression. Smoking not only affects the person who smokes but also other people who surround him, her. According to the American Heart Association, nearly 35,000 passive smokers die of smoke inhaled from a lit pipe, cigar or cigarette. People who do not smoke directly and inhale smoke from cigarette smoke by his, her neighbor is known as a passive smoker, secondary smoker or indirect smoker. Among the passive smokers, women, children and infants are at a higher risk. Infants and children who are exposed to smoke develop asthma, frequent ear infections and may even experience infant death syndrome. The symptoms experienced by secondary smokers are coughing, excess mucus formation in the airways, chest discomfort, chest pain, and lung irritation. They even feel irritation of throat, nose and eyes. If passive smokers experience chest pain, it can be an indication of heart disease. Sometimes the symptoms of secondary smoking can coincide with the symptoms of other medical conditions. Hence, it is recommended to contact the doctor immediately after the surfacing of the symptoms. Inactive smokers, smoking, apart from building up high cholesterol in the blood, increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, obesity, high blood pressure, physical inactivity and diabetes. So smoking cessation will not only reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, which is top of the list but also decreases the risk by 50% of heart attacks and deaths caused by it. But quitting smoking undertakes lots of physical and mental efforts. The person should be made mentally relaxed and stress-free. In the case of adolescents, they can be asked to exercise regularly and sleep adequately. The American Lung Association and the American Academy of Otolaryngology have developed certain tips which can be of great help to the smokers who are thinking of quitting. The smokers must first be made to understand the reason for quitting. Stress only makes even more difficult to quit smoking, so a stress-free period should be chosen to quit. Family and friends' encouragement and support are extremely necessary to persuade the smoker to quit. If the support isn't sufficient, smokers can join a smoking cessation program or a support group to attain their goals. A balanced diet is a must, along with lots of rest.
Sometimes taking nicotine replacement products, such as nicotine chewing gum, nicotine inhalers, and nicotine patch, are a great help to smokers who want to quit. By using these products the smokers can satisfy their nicotine craving. The good thing is that these nicotine replacement products can deduct the poisonous gases and tars emitted by the cigarettes. But nursing and pregnant women should consult a doctor before trying nicotine replacement products. For such people, a non-nicotine alternative is available in the market. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for low-cost healthy living. Garlic is a very common food found in kitchens throughout the world and has been around for hundreds of years. While it has been used to season foods, it has also been placed in many home remedies for years. Because garlic is such a versatile ingredient, it has many beneficial qualities. It has many important qualities and health benefits as well. It is also high in vitamins and minerals, such as, vitamin B, sodium, potassium and magnesium. It is also composed of sulfur. Garlic can treat many infections, metabolic disorders and respiratory problems. It contains antioxidants and anti-inflammatories which assist in cardiovascular health. It also reduces the body's cholesterol levels. It can also increase the body's blood flow and prevent premature aging. It is claimed that garlic can help you to have a restful sleep, that consuming it can give you greater energy, that you can use it to ward off the common cold, and that it has antibacterial properties can be used to heal small wounds on the surface of the skin. Garlic with scientific name Allium sativum, is a root vegetable species in the onion genus. It is native to Central Asia and Northeastern Iran. It has long been used as a source of food flavoring and has been used in traditional medicine since the time of the ancient Egyptians. Ancient Romans and Greeks are said to have used it not just to flavor food but also to cure illnesses. It is claimed to have natural antibacterial effects which were utilized to ward off smallpox, common colds and dropsy. Garlic has a strong aroma which lingers on the breath when ingested. It is common in dishes from the Mediterranean and Asia. It is often combined and served with onions. When cooked, the flavor is retained but the key vitamins and minerals are lost through the heating process. Garlic contains several nutrients including vitamins B6, thiamine and pantothenic acid, vitamin C and dietary minerals, manganese, phosphorus, calcium, iron and zinc. Several medical research studies have investigated the claimed effects of garlic when treating disease. There appears to be evidence which suggests high levels of garlic consumption can reduce the risk of prostate cancer in some circumstances. There is also evidence that the vitamins and trace minerals in garlic can help alleviate the effects of the common cold. There is evidence that too much topical application of garlic direct to the skin or as garlic oil on the skin can result in minor burns. In areas where mosquitoes are problematic, consuming garlic can help deter them. The sulfur-containing compounds which are released when garlic cloves are crushed are natural deterrents for insects. Growing garlic amongst vegetables and flowers can also deter slugs from approaching the area. Researchers have found out that a clove of garlic under your pillow will help you sleep much more soundly and calmly. This sounds a bit weird, but the sulfurose substances in garlic combined with the aroma have a calming effect on you. The smell of the garlic will reach through the pillow a little bit, which helps you to fall asleep more easily. Plus, it will also improve the quality of your sleep. In other words, you sleep quicker and deeper. To do this, put one or two cloves including peel and make sure not to crush the clove. Retain the paper cover around the clove and place the clove under your pillow at night. In the morning, remove the clove and discard, repeat each night. Some trace elements are released as the heat of your body warms the clove. It generates an aroma which permeates the air around your pillow. This is a very old and traditional method to help people with insomnia. 
Many ancient cultures discovered garlic's ability to fight off diseases and infections thousands of years ago. The garlic will help you relax and relieve stress and anxiety. Garlic has been even been thought of as being more powerful than some modern chemical medicines. Give it a try and for yourself. The information contained in this video is meant for natural home remedies only. This should not be taken the place of medical advice from a trained professional. If you feel that you are really suffering from a sleep disorder or medical condition, please see your healthcare provider immediately. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Have you tried eating bitter melon or bitter gourd? If you haven't tried, then this video is for you. Bitter melon also known as bitter gourd is the English name of Mamordica carantia. This is also known by the names Kerala and Balsam pear. Bitter melon grows in tropical areas, including parts of East Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, and South America, where it is used as a food as well as a medicine. It is a green cucumber-shaped fruit with gourd-like bumps all over it. It looks like an ugly, light green cucumber. The fruit should be firm like a cucumber and it tastes very bitter. Although the seeds, leaves, and vines of bitter melon have all been used, the fruit is the safest and most prevalent part of the plant used medicinally. The leaves and fruit have both been used occasionally to make teas and beer, or to season soups in the western world. Bitter melon was traditionally used for a dazzling array of conditions by people in tropical regions. Numerous infections, cancer, leukemia, and diabetes are among the most common conditions it was believed to improve. Bitter melon is reported to help in the treatment of diabetes and psoriasis. It has also been thought that bitter melon may help in the treatment of HIV, but the evidence thus far is too weak to even consider. The ripe fruit of bitter melon has been suggested to exhibit some remarkable anti-cancer effects, but there is absolutely no evidence that it can treat cancer. However, research studies do appear to confirm that bitter melon may improve blood sugar control in people with adult onset, type 2, diabetes. There are many ways of eating the fruit or vegetable. It can be mixed with an egg, meat, spices, and stir-fried. It can also be cooked as a soup or can be pickled. You can also make a frotty or a juice from the fruit which is a good remedy in controlling blood sugar. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. You want to know if sleeping on top of a clove of garlic will cure your nagging sleep disorder? Keep on viewing this video so you will find out. Garlic is a very common food found in kitchens throughout the world and has been around for hundreds of years. While it has been used to season foods, it has also been placed in many home remedies for years. Because garlic is such a versatile ingredient, it has many beneficial qualities. It has many important qualities and health benefits as well. It is also high in vitamins and minerals, such as, vitamin B, sodium, potassium and magnesium. It is also composed of sulfur. Garlic can treat many infections, metabolic disorders and respiratory problems. It contains antioxidants and anti-inflammatories which assist in cardiovascular health. It also reduces the body's cholesterol levels. It can also increase the body's blood flow and prevent premature aging. It is claimed that garlic can help you to have a restful sleep, that consuming it can give you greater energy, that you can use it to ward off the common cold, and that it has antibacterial properties can be used to heal small wounds on the surface of the skin. Garlic with scientific name Allium sativum, is a root vegetable species in the onion genus. It is native to Central Asia and Northeastern Iran. It has long been used as a source of food flavoring and has been used in traditional medicine since the time of the ancient Egyptians. 
Ancient Romans and Greeks are said to have used it not just to flavor food but also to cure illnesses. It is claimed to have natural antibacterial effects which were utilized to ward off smallpox, common colds and dropsy. Garlic has a strong aroma which lingers on the breath when ingested. It is common in dishes from the Mediterranean and Asia. It is often combined and served with onions. When cooked, the flavor is retained but the key vitamins and minerals are lost through the heating process. Garlic contains several nutrients including vitamins B6, thiamine and pantothenic acid, vitamin C and dietary minerals, manganese, phosphorus, calcium, iron and zinc. Several medical research studies have investigated the claimed effects of garlic when treating disease. There appears to be evidence which suggests high levels of garlic consumption can reduce the risk of prostate cancer in some circumstances. There is also evidence that the vitamins and trace minerals in garlic can help alleviate the effects of the common cold. There is evidence that too much topical application of garlic direct to the skin or as garlic oil on the skin can result in minor burns. In areas where mosquitoes are problematic, consuming garlic can help deter them. The sulfur-containing compounds which are released when garlic cloves are crushed are natural deterrents for insects. Growing garlic amongst vegetables and flowers can also deter slugs from approaching the area. Researchers have found out that a clove of garlic under your pillow will help you sleep much more soundly and calmly. This sounds a bit weird, but the sulfurose substances in garlic combined with the aroma have a calming effect on you. The smell of the garlic will reach through the pillow a little bit, which helps you to fall asleep more easily. Plus, it will also improve the quality of your sleep. In other words, you sleep quicker and deeper. To do this, put one or two cloves including peel and make sure not to crush the clove. Retain the paper cover around the clove and place the clove under your pillow at night. In the morning, remove the clove and discard, repeat each night. Some trace elements are released as the heat of your body warms the clove. It generates an aroma which permeates the air around your pillow. This is a very old and traditional method to help people with insomnia. Many ancient cultures discovered garlic's ability to fight off diseases and infections thousands of years ago. The garlic will help you relax and relieve stress and anxiety. Garlic has been even been thought of as being more powerful than some modern chemical medicines. Give it a try and for yourself. The information contained in this video is meant for natural home remedies only. This should not be taken the place of medical advice from a trained professional. If you feel that you are really suffering from a sleep disorder or medical condition, please see your healthcare provider immediately. So, if you learn something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Did you know that there are plenty of benefits of drinking lemon water every morning? Please continue viewing this video so you will learn more. Lemons are a nutritious fruit packed with vitamin C and a host of antioxidants. Consuming lemon water has ample benefits, including kicking the digestive system into action, fighting off infections, and boosting the immune system. Here are the benefits, aids in digestion. Drink a cup of lemon water on an empty stomach in the morning to ease bloating, gas, and constipation. Lemon contains minerals that promote healthy digestion, alleviate heartburn, and stimulate healthy bowel function by reducing bloat and stimulating bowel movements. A natural liver aid. The liver is especially active during sleep. Your body restores and regenerates while you sleep and the liver is hard at work processing and flushing out toxins. Drinking lemon water first thing in the morning helps wake up your liver and stimulate proper stomach acid production and bile production to aid in digestion. Healthy weight. There is evidence that drinking water, especially lemon water first thing in the morning can help maintain a healthy weight. Researchers in Germany found that drinking enough water increased metabolism. Balances your body's pH. 
The term pH stands for power of hydrogen, which is a measurement of the alkaline, acidity balance of your body tissues and organs. Ideally, the healthiest pH is slightly alkaline, and even though lemons are acidic on the outside, they're actually an incredibly alkaline food when absorbed by the body. When your body's pH is out of whack or excessively acidic, which can be caused by things like alcohol, stress, lack of exercise and a diet high in processed foods, your body's immune system becomes compromised, leading to inflammation and disease. Incorporating lemon juice and these other alkaline forming foods into your daily diet will help keep things in balance. Speaking of balance, the smell of lemons may even help reduce stress. Boost your immune system. Vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid, is a powerful antioxidant that helps ward off disease, and lemons are loaded with it. Just one large lemon contains about 75% of your daily requirement. Research has shown that vitamin C can help shorten the duration of cold symptoms and that the best way to reap its benefits is by consuming it in your diet, rather than popping a supplement it may help you look younger. Another benefit of vitamin C's free radical fighting power is that it protects against skin damage. Of course, it's normal for your skin to gradually lose its elasticity with age, but too much free radical exposure, like pollution, smoke, radiation, UV rays, and many others, accelerates the aging process. Antioxidants, like vitamin C, help keep these toxic molecules in check. Vitamin C also boosts your body's collagen production, helping to build healthy tissue and keep skin strong and resilient. Kidney stones. These are solid mineral formations that collect in the kidneys. The most common type is made of a substance called calcium oxalate, and is typically treated with a compound called citrate. Increasing the amount of citrate in your urine is thought to prevent calcium from binding with other compounds and forming stones. In short, citrate restores the urine's ability to prevent kidney stone formation. Lemon water contains high amounts of citrate, and numerous human studies have found it can successfully help treat kidney stones. It appears to be most effective when used alongside potassium citrate, the supplement form of citrate. However, lemon water may also be a good alternative for those who don't tolerate potassium citrate as a first-line treatment. Studies show that lemon water can help treat kidney stones. It appears most effective alongside conventional therapy, but may also be a useful alternative treatment. How do you drink lemon water in the morning? Simply squeeze fresh lemon juice into ice cube trays and freeze. Drop a few cubes into a glass of cold or hot water as needed. You can start your morning with a mug of warm lemon water and keep a pitcher of water infused with a few sliced lemons in your refrigerator to drink throughout the day. So, if you learn something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Do you know that the best natural way of losing weight is just controlling your appetite and your metabolism so that you will not earn more weight fast? Weight loss refers to a reduction of the total body mass, due to a mean loss of fluid, body fat or adipose tissue or lean mass, namely, bone mineral deposits, muscle, tendon, and other connective tissue. This could be achieved faster if the next following discussion shall be observed or followed. 1. Use smaller plates Using smaller plates reduces how much food you eat. Some studies have shown that using smaller plates helps you eat less, because it changes how you see portion sizes. People seem to fill their plates the same, regardless of plate size, so they end up putting more food on larger plates than smaller ones. 2. Eat whole single ingredient foods One of the best things you can do to become healthier is to base your diet on whole, single ingredient foods. By doing this, you eliminate the vast majority of added sugar, added fat and processed food. Most whole foods are naturally making it a lot easier to keep within healthy calorie limits. Furthermore, eating whole foods also provides your body with the many essential nutrients that it needs to function properly. 
Weight loss often follows as a natural side effect of eating whole foods. 3. Limit your intake of added sugar. Eating a lot of added sugar is linked with some of the world's leading diseases, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes and cancer. On average, Americans eat about 15 teaspoons of added sugar each day. This amount is usually hidden in various processed foods, so you may be consuming a lot of sugar without even realizing it. Since sugar goes by many names in ingredient lists, it can be very difficult to figure out how much sugar a product actually contains. Minimizing your intake of added sugar is a great way to improve your diet. Water is particularly good for weight loss when it replaces other beverages that are high in calories and sugar. 4. Avoid liquid calories. Liquid calories come from beverages like sugary soft drinks, fruit juices, chocolate milk and energy drinks. These drinks are bad for health in several ways, including an increased risk of obesity. One study showed a drastic 60% increase in the risk of obesity among children, for each daily serving of a sugar-sweetened beverage. It's also important to note that your brain does not register liquid calories the same way it does solid calories, so you end up adding these calories on top of everything else that you eat. 5. Drink water. There is actually truth to the claim that drinking water can help with weight loss. Drinking 0.5 liters 17 ounces of water may increase the calories you burn by 24-30% for an hour afterward. Drinking water before meals may also lead to reduced calorie intake, especially for middle-aged and older people. In order for weight loss to be permanent, changes in diet and lifestyle must be permanent as well. There is evidence that counseling or exercise alone do not result in weight loss, whereas dieting alone results in meaningful long-term weight loss, and a combination of dieting and exercise provides the best results. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Everyone would like to feel more energetic during the day. You naturally go through periods of higher activity which contrasts with times of relaxation. The problem occurs when more energy and concentration is required than we can give. This video will give you 7 natural ways how to boost your energy. 1. Stay on a regular sleep schedule. You can't stay up late during the weekend and suddenly on Monday morning wake up refreshed. If you do enjoy later nights on Friday and Saturday vow to get to bed early on Sunday to wake up rested. 2. Avoid the sugar and caffeine roller coaster. Eat some protein and foods with a bit of fat in the morning. The brain needs protein and the body does not store it. You don't have to eat very much, a glass of low-fat milk, a piece of cheese, or a handful of nuts will get you going instead of pure carbohydrates like a plain bagel. 3. Take a 5-10 to 10 minute power nap around lunch. Even if you just close your eyes and let your mind drift you will be refreshed for the afternoon. This is also effective anytime you feel yourself not concentrating, reading the same material over and over. Give in to the urge and completely relax for a few moments. 4. Drink more water and liquids. I know, everyone says to drink more fluids. But most Americans are in a constant state of dehydration from filling up on coffee, tea, and sodas with caffeine. This is very stressful to the kidneys and can cause irritation to the bladder. Keep a sports bottle filled with your favorite flavored water or just plain and keep it with you at all times. Set a goal empty by lunch, refill, empty again by the time work is over. Carry plenty of water in the car too for you and your family. 5. Exercise regularly. This is easier said than done with a busy schedule. A poor conditioning level causes you to be short of breath and your heart to race when just doing simple things like climbing a flight of steps or doing household chores. Park farther away when shopping and walk. Dust off that exercise machine or get an exercise tape to play when weather is bad. Set an example for the rest of your family and maybe they will join in too. 6. 
A joke a day keeps the doctor away. Seriously, laughter has many beneficial effects on the body. The brain chemicals for experiencing pleasure, happiness, and peace increase with a good, hearty laugh. Live alone? Get a funny movie or watch a light-hearted comedy on TV. Nothing sarcastic or put down, however. 7. Avoid confrontations and situations with negative people. You know who they are. They are not going to change but they will bring you and your mood down. The complainers, gossipers, and generally unhappy souls we all have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis drain our energy if we allow them. Be polite but avoid arguing or getting hooked into listening to their constant problems. 8. Take regular, daily supplements of the highest quality. Our food and diet simply do not meet the amounts needed for maximum health. There is a difference between avoiding nutritional deficiencies and optimum performance. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Did you know how much one would feel when a family member suffers from drug addiction? We all know that it's very hard because it affects everyone we know and they know. Their addiction can have emotional, psychological, financial, and environmental effects on the people who care about them most. Dealing with addicted family members is always a big challenge. There are some important issues to explore when someone you love is harming themselves. People use various addictions to avoid their painful feelings, especially their feelings of anxiety, stress, aloneness, emptiness and loneliness. Is there some way that you are contributing to their pain? While you are not responsible for how someone deals with pain, you are responsible for anything you are doing that may be contributing to it. Some of the ways you might be contributing are 1. Being judgmental toward the addicted person in an effort to control them regarding their addictions or regarding other behavior. 2. Caretaking the addicted person by covering up for them or doing things for them that they need to be doing for themselves. 3. Being discounting or dismissive toward them when they try to share their feelings with you about something you might be doing that is difficult for them. 4. Telling yourself that you are responsible for them, rather than taking loving care of yourself. Accepting your lack of control. Regardless of how you might be contributing to the problem, their choice to act out addictively is still 100% their choice, and you cannot control this. When you do not accept your powerlessness over another's choices and behavior, then you might stay in situations that are detrimental to you, trying to get the other person to change. Staying tuned into your own feelings and needs. Are you focused on the addicted person rather than on your feelings and needs? Are you putting yourself aside in your attempts to help them? Are you abandoning yourself in your efforts to get them to stop abandoning themselves and harming themselves? If you focus on your own feelings and your responsibility for yourself, what would you be doing differently? Are you feeling sad, used, angry, or anxious much of the time? If this is the case, then you need to start taking care of yourself rather than abandoning yourself. Taking loving action. If you completely accept your lack of control over the other person and stop caretaking them or judging them, and if you tune into yourself and discover that you are distressed as a result of this relationship, then you have some hard decisions to make. It is very important to understand that whatever is truly in your highest good, is also in the highest good of all. When you take loving care of yourself, you open the door for others to take loving care of themselves. What are some of the loving actions to take regarding the addicted person? 1. Join an appropriate group to help you move out of enabling the addicted person and out of enmeshment with him or her. 2. Get professional help to heal your need to control through your caretaking or through being judgmental. 3. Contact a professional who does interventions and bring together all the people who are sad about the situation and are willing to stop contact with the addicted person until he or she goes into a treatment center or gets some other form of good help. 4. Decide for yourself that you will no longer be involved with the family member as long as he or she is acting out the addiction. 
This means leaving the relationship, which may be a very hard thing to do. You may need professional help to take this action. 5. Accept the person as he or she is, completely accepting that the addiction will continue, and learn to take care of yourself within the situation. When you completely accept your lack of control and deal with your own controlling behavior, then you can open to learning about the loving action to take in your own behalf and in behalf of the addicted family member. So, if you learn something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. know the natural remedies for strep throat? If you don't know, then this video is for you. There are many ways of helping the body in dealing with infections. Home remedies for strep throat are various and they include many aspects, diet, natural antiseptics, natural analgesics or natural antibacterial cures. Used appropriately, home remedies for strep throat can speed up the process of healing by fighting bacteria and by stimulating the immune system of the body. Strep throat can occur to anyone at any time. Although children and teenagers are the ones who often get strep throat, adults may also be affected by this illness. Strep throat occurs due to infection with group of streptococcus bacteria. This type of bacteria is very contagious and can be easily transmitted through secretions, sneezing, coughing, or physical contact, handshake, touch. Even perfect hygiene can't prevent strep throat from occurring, as the bacteria that cause the infection are also airborne. In some cases, you can contract the bacteria responsible for strep throat just by standing next to a contaminated person. The most common symptoms for strep throat are inflammation and swelling of the throat, inflammation and swelling of the tonsils, swelling and tenderness of the lymph glands, difficulty in swallowing, fever, headache, nausea, fatigue, vomiting and diarrhea. There are home remedies for strep throat that can ease each of these symptoms. However, it is very important to understand that home remedies for strep throat can't completely replace medical treatments prescribed by a physician. Strep throat is an infection caused by bacteria and therefore needs appropriate treatment that consists of antibiotics. Although there are natural alternatives for medical antibiotics, they are considerably less effective in fighting bacteria on their own. Home remedies for strep throat that can act as antibiotics are garlic, honey, olive leaf extract and tea tree oil. Such home remedies for strep throat can help in fighting infection and inflammation, but medical treatment shouldn't be ignored. In fact, most home remedies for strep throat should be used only in addition to medical treatment with antibiotics. Home remedies for strep throat pain, discomfort and soreness are chamomiles, sage, peppermint, lavender, jasmine, rosemary and thyme. These can either be used as essences or ointments and are very efficient in reducing the pain and for relaxing the body. Peppermint and chamomile teas can relieve abdominal pain, reduce nausea and can also correct internal disorders such as diarrhea. A quick, effective home remedy for strep throat is salty water gargle. By washing the oral cavity with salty water a few times a day you can help the body in overcoming the bacteria responsible for the infection. When suffering from strep throat, make sure you get enough sleep. Sleep is vital for body regeneration and for maintaining a strong immune system. However, due to the discomfort and pain caused by the infection with bacteria, you might have difficulties in falling asleep. Home remedies for strep throat that have both sedative and analgesic effects are ginseng and passion flower. Home remedies for strep throat are a very good means of speeding up the process of recovery. By following an appropriate medical treatment and a few good home remedies for strep throat, you will quickly overcome the infection and revitalize your body. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living.
There is a good chance that you have seen an organic food aisle at one of your local grocery stores. In fact, you may have even driven past a farmer's market where the organic food was sold. There is also a good chance that you kept right on walking or driving by. This is because many individuals do not eat organic foods. Despite the fact that organic foods are not consumed by most of us, they still come highly rated and recommended. In fact, many health-conscious individuals swear by them. Many claims that eating organic foods helps to promote lifelong health and happiness. Organic food consumption has increased in popularity over the years and that increase continues to rise at a relatively steady pace. If you are interested in eating organic foods, but if you have never done so before, you may be wondering what the benefits are. If so, please continue viewing on. When it comes to organic foods and their benefits, you will find an unlimited number of benefits. For starters, did you know that organic foods can help the environment? They can and this is a point that many do not take into consideration at first. Farmers who put pesticides in their fields and on their foods are not only putting consumers at risk but the environment at risk as well. Depending on which pesticides and other chemicals are used, the soil and other nearby areas can suffer damage. By eating organic foods, you are providing a small, yet still helping hand to help protect the environment. Another unique benefit to eating organic that many individuals do not think of right away is the assistance that is provided to organic farmers and organic food manufacturers. Right now, the number of organic food manufacturers is quite small and many are small to medium-sized businesses. The same can be said for farmers. The decision for many farmers and companies to go organic can be difficult and risky. Therefore, by purchasing organic foods, especially fresh fruits and vegetables, you can take comfort in knowing that you are helping many small to medium-sized farmers and organic food companies stay in business. Organic foods can also help to improve your body and health. In fact, organic foods may be able to help cleanse or detoxify your body from harmful chemicals. When you stop eating foods that are tainted with pesticides and other chemicals, your body will expel the current and remaining toxins from your body. This means that your body should be clean, chemical-free, and pesticide-free after a specific period of time. Of course, remember that you want to stay healthy. For that reason, if you decide to start eating organic foods, try to stay doing so. If you are a parent, one of the best ways to help ensure that your child has a happy and healthy life is to get them started on eating organic foods as early as possible. Another one of the many benefits to eating organic foods is the better quality. In fact, many individuals claim that organic food tastes much better. One reason why farmers claim to use potentially harmful pesticides and chemicals is to kill bacteria. While this does sound like a good idea, the bacteria that can be present when fruits and vegetables grow isn't necessarily bad. In fact, some say that it helps to foods grow in a certain way. This, apparently, in turn, helps to produce better results, which should better tasting, more natural food. As you can see, there are a number of benefits to eating organic foods. In fact, the preceding mentioned benefits are just a few of the many reasons why organic food should be given a close examination. If you would like more information on organic foods, including the benefits of eating them, consider speaking with a professional healthcare provider, like your doctor. He or she can help you decide if switching to organic foods is the right decision. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. On Friday afternoon after you leave work, you probably think about going out and having a few drinks with friends to relax and wind down. Even though you may think you deserve to go out and have a few drinks, there are some things that you should certainly keep in mind. Like any other day, tomorrow is going to be a day for exercise, and since you are exercising on a regular basis, a few drinks of alcohol won't really hurt anything, right? 
Before you decide to rush out to the local bar, there are a few things that you should think about before you make your choice about going out to drink some alcohol. Research has proven that even small amounts of alcohol will increase muscular endurance and the output of strength, although these types of benefits are very short-lived. After 20 minutes or so, the problems will begin to surface. All of the negative side effects associated with alcohol will easily outweigh any possible benefits that it can have. No matter how you look at it, alcohol is a poison that can really harm your body if you are not careful. The negative side of alcohol can reduce your strength, endurance, aerobic capability, recovery time, ability to metabolize fat, and even your muscle growth as well. Alcohol will also have an effect on your nervous system and brain. If you use it long term, you can cause severe deterioration of your central nervous system. Even with short term use, nerve muscle interaction can be reduced which will result in a loss of strength. Once alcohol reaches the blood cells, it can and probably will damage them. With alcohol users, inflammation of the muscle cells is a very common thing. Over periods of time, some of these cells that have been damaged can die which will result in less functional muscle contractions. Drinking alcohol will also leave you with more soreness of your muscles after you exercise, which means that it will take you a lot longer to recuperate. Alcohol will also have many different effects on your heart and circulatory system as well. When you drink any type of alcohol, you may begin to see a reduction in your endurance capabilities. Anytime you drink, your heat loss will increase due to the alcohol simulating your blood vessels to dilate. The loss in heat can cause your muscles to become quite cold, therefore become slower and weaker during your muscle contractions. Drinking alcohol can also lead to digestive and nutrition problems as well. Alcohol cause a release of insulin that will increase the metabolism of glycogen, which spares fat and makes the loss of fat very hard. Due to alcohol interfering with the absorption of several key nutrients, you can also become anemic and deficient with B-type vitamins. Because your liver is the organ that detoxifies alcohol, the more you drink, the harder your liver has to work. The extra stress alcohol places on your liver can cause serious damage and even destroy some of your liver cells. Since alcohol is diuretic, drinking large amounts can put a lot of stress on your kidneys as well. During diuretic action, the hormones are secreted. This can lead to heightened water retention and no one who exercises will want this to happen. If you must drink alcohol, you should do it in moderation and never drink before you exercise, as this will impair your balance, coordination, and also your judgment. Think about your health and how you exercise, and you may begin to look at things from a whole new perspective. So, if you learn something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Do you know that arthritis exercises are beneficial for relieving pain and joint stiffness? Arthritis exercises and stretching can be particularly helpful during a flare. People with arthritis who exercise may find that they have less pain than those who do not. Exercise can reduce painful symptoms, improve joint function and flexibility, increase range of motion and boost mood. A recommended 30-minute minimum of daily activity is the norm. Before starting any exercise program, it is vital that one speak to their doctor to ensure there are no unseen risks, however, you will find that most doctors recommend exercise for their arthritis patients either on their own initiative or when asked. The types of exercises suggested vary, however, with all types of exercise the warm-up is the starting point. Warming up is best started with applying warm compresses to the joints, followed by mild stretching. The range of motion exercises, such as dance, is a very good start, as are low-impact aerobics. These can relieve stiffness and increase flexibility. Never discount the effectiveness of walking as an exercise. Walking is a great exercise to improve the arthritic condition, and carrying weights as light as one pound and using your arms as you walk can involve the whole body. 
The trick is to make walking interesting enough as an exercise to stay motivated. Try walking in different settings, alternating walking with dance on different days, and of course including a partner can be much more interesting than going at it alone. Using aquatics, exercising in a pool is a great way to exercise as well. Water is an excellent aid because it provides resistance that builds muscle in the entire body while reducing shock to the joints at the same time. Additionally, because the whole body tends to become involved in aquatic exercise the added benefit of cardiovascular exercise is enjoyed. If at all possible, find a heated pool to work out in. Warm water is soothing to the joints and will cause the blood vessels to dilate, increasing circulation. With that in mind, it is often beneficial to add using a spa to your regimen, perhaps after your workout, in order to provide some soothing jets of water to your muscles and even more help with increased circulation, which is always vital when dealing with arthritis. If you still want more variety, you may want to try yoga. Yoga is a general term for several stretching and pose-oriented exercises originating in India and is extremely beneficial toward achieving flexibility and reducing stress physically and mentally. There are gentle forms of yoga such as Hatha Yoga that are excellent to start with. Hatha Yoga comprises of gentle stretches and simple poses that help flexibility and balance and are easy to learn and enjoy. Check your local activities paper or section of your local paper to see if there are any yoga classes near you. Even when you cannot make it out to walk or to an aquatics or yoga class, there are exercises you can do daily to improve flexibility, strength, and conditioning. You can flex your legs while sitting in a chair facing forward, simply by moving your leg outward while keeping your foot on the floor and holding it there for a few seconds, then retracting it until your foot is behind you, then alternating to the other leg. Interlocking your fingers and slowly flexing your wrists to the left and the right for a few minutes a day can help tremendously to increase flexibility and reduce pain in the wrist area. For your upper back, you can stand upright in front of a table, then lean over and place your hands on the table and tuck your chin back toward your collarbone. Once positioned as such, lift your upper back upward and simultaneously take a deep breath. Hold that position for 5 to 10 seconds and then relax while exhaling. While doing this, lower your spine slowly as you move both shoulder blades forward as if toward each other. Repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 repetitions. For the shoulders and middle back, start again from an upright position standing as straight as you can, reach back and lock the fingers of both hands together. Breathe slowly and deeply and lift upward with your shoulders while at the same time, exhaling. Be sure to keep your chest up and your chin in. Repeat this for about 10 to 15 sets. For the shoulders and upper chest, choose a free corner of the room to stand in and place your hands on the opposite sides of the corner. Take a step back about 18 inches from the corner. You now should be facing the corner directly with your hands on both of the walls with your body some distance from the wall itself. Keeping your chest up after inhaling, lean in toward the corner while exhaling. Repeat this exercise for 10 to 15 sets. Whatever exercise program you choose, be sure to breathe properly when exercising. Oxygenation is important to any exercise regimen as it promotes a healthy heart rate and reduces fatigue. Additionally, oxygenation helps circulation, which is vital to achieving the flexibility and strength that you are trying to achieve in battling arthritis. Also, listen to your body. It is natural to feel a little fatigue and soreness when starting a new exercise regimen, however, if the pain of soreness persists for more than one hour, or you have a decrease in mobility that lasts longer than an hour, then the regimen should be reduced until the soreness desists. Also, look for signs of increased swelling of joints or any persistent increase of weakness, these are signs of activities that are too strenuous and a reduction in activity will be necessary. Just remember to take all new exercise regimens slowly at the start. The idea is to increase flexibility not to train for the Olympics. There are three main types of exercises to include in a basic exercise program. Range of motion exercises. These lessen stiffness and help with improving flexibility. Range of motion refers to the area within which the joints move naturally or on a daily basis. 
Although these range of motion exercises can be performed every day, it is recommended that they are done at least every other day. Strengthening Exercises There are two types of strengthening exercises, isometric or tightening the muscles without moving the joints, and isotonic, moving of the joints for strengthening muscle movements. It is recommended to do these sets of exercises every other day unless you are suffering from more than mild joint pain or swelling. Endurance exercises. The objective of this is to increase stamina. They also help with improving your inner personal, mental strength and improving weight control and sleep. Some of the most popular endurance exercises are stationary bike riding, walking, and water exercising. And unless you are suffering from more than mild joint pain or swelling, a 20 to 30 minute workout or 2 to 3 short 10 minute bouts during the day is what is recommended, an average of 3 times each week. Be kind to your body, and it will be kind to you. Arthritis Exercise Tips Let's sum up arthritis exercise with a few tips for all. 1. Establish your own unique, exercise program so that it meets your personal health needs, budget, and environment. Make sure it is safe by checking with your own professional healthcare advisor and workout trainer. And take it slow and steady like Aesop's turtle in the race. 2. Be kind to yourself. Stop if something hurts. And experiment with applying heat before exercising and warming up. Then cool off afterward with cold packs. 3. Enjoy exercising by making it a real part of your life during the week. Include range of motion, strengthening and endurance exercises in your routines. And vary your activities, try a new class at a health club one quarter. Next time, go elsewhere or join a naturalist group for weekly hikes in local parks. Keep an active folder with pockets of gyms and health clubs near you with their schedules and updated classes and coupon specials. And check newspapers, local bulletin boards, postings at the gyms and clubs, etc. for healthy activities like walk-a-thons and bike-a-thons for non-profits and evening, weekend hikes in which you can participate. You'll meet new friends, have fun, get out more and exercise all at the same time. 4. Exercise activities are available all around you, too. No need to spend time and money elsewhere. You can borrow exercise videos, cassettes, DVDs and books from public libraries. You can get active by washing windows, cleaning your house, car, pet, children's closets, your closets, anything. You can even earn money doing activities like walking and distributing flyers, local newspapers and coupons. Check with companies who place these in and around your mailbox and door, they often need help. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified of the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for low-cost healthy living. Many of us know what cholesterol and heart disease are. What most of us don't know is that there are arguments whether cholesterol is the main cause of heart disease. Some experts say that cholesterol is one of the main cause of heart disease while there are others who think otherwise. Experts from the Framingham Heart Study have determined that high bad cholesterol is one of the factors for a coronary heart disease or CHD. The result of their study showed that the ones who have a higher bad cholesterol level is the most likely he will have a coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease is unusual at low cholesterol levels. A connection between high bad cholesterol and heart disease was also confirmed by another group of experts. Their studies showed that lowering the total low-density lipoproteins or LDL bad cholesterol levels drastically reduces coronary heart disease. Recently, a series of trials of cholesterol using statin drugs showed that lowering the total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol greatly reduces the chance of experiencing a heart attack, angioplasty, a bypass that requires surgery, and dying of coronary heart disease-related causes. What are the risk factors that increases the risk of developing heart disease? The risk factors are the condition that one has. Even though some risk factors can be modified, some risk factors cannot be changed. 
All in all, the more risk factor that you have, the more chances you will be experiencing a heart disease. Here are some of the risk factors that cannot be modified, age, 55 and above for female while 45 and above for male, family history, parents or sibling who died of a heart disease at the age stated herein. Here are some known risk factors that one can change, high total cholesterol and high low density lipoproteins or LDL, bad cholesterol low high density lipoproteins or HDL, good cholesterol smoking high blood pressure diabetes, the risk of developing a heart disease is high if you are diabetic, physical inactivity obesity or overweight. It is advisable to go to a physician if you are not sure if you have a high blood pressure and high bad cholesterol levels. Although some experts agree that the high blood pressure, high bad cholesterol and heart disease are somewhat connected, there are also few experts who tend to disagree that too much animal fat or high bad cholesterol and heart disease go together. They argued that there is no such thing as bad or good cholesterol. They believe that mental stress, physical activity and change of body weight may influence the level of high bad cholesterol and that a high blood pressure is not dangerous but only reflects an unhealthy condition. There are lots of factors that some experts disagree with each other. Whatever causes of high bad cholesterol and heart disease are, the only sure thing is, to live a healthy life. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. There are a lot of people who are overweight. For those who are obese, perhaps surgery is the best option but for those who can't, they can try to see if acupuncture can help take out the excess weight. Acupuncture is a form of holistic health care that uses needles to help treat a patient. Unlike the cartoon where the balloon will pop and all the air will go out, the needles that are inserted into the vital points will stimulate the body to release endorphins thus helping the person control their appetite. But before needles are inserted, the specialist will first ask the patient some questions and perform an examination. This is needed to understand the main cause for the person to be overweight. Part of examination is to help the acupuncturist figure out where the needles will be inserted. Your pulse will give the person an idea on your general state of energy and the general health of your stomach. You will also have to open your mouth and show your tongue to check for cracks, peelings or puffiness on the stomach area as this provides clues to why you are overweight. Once he or she knows the reason, this is the time that the needles are inserted into different parts of the body. One way is called the multi-targeted approach which is designed to lower the body's weight by increasing the output of the pituitary gland. The areas where the needles will be inserted will be in the ear and in two of three body points. These areas could also include the mouth, the stomach, the lung, the endocrine, the spleen, kidney or thyroid. During the initial treatment, the four gate points would be used to circulate energy throughout the entire body. It is also possible that electro simulation will also be done to increase endorphin release and stimulate metabolism. These needles will be kept in place for 30 to 45 minutes depending on how much support is needed. These are then removed and replaced with ear tacks with adhesives to make sure they are in the same spot as the needles. These ear tacks work by applying mild pressure whenever he or she feels hungry. It causes a mild endorphin release and helps the patient relax making it possible to use their willpower and resist the temptation to eat. The patient will also have to reduce cravings on certain food by cutting down the intake. Some studies suggest that this can also lower insulin levels or lipid levels in the blood. The best part about acupuncture is that there are no harmful side effects and no chance for an addiction to occur. The patient will have to come back for regular treatment and have to pay attention to one's diet and exercise regularly as needles can only do so much to control one's weight. The number of treatments for someone who is overweight varies depending on how many pounds they want to lose, the speed at which they want to lose it and their commitment to sticking to the plan. 
The average patient on the other hand who wants to lose 5 to 10 pounds will have to come for treatment every 3 days or twice a week then once this is attained, once every 2 weeks. It is up to the person until when the treatment will be done which shows that acupuncture can help you lose weight. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Did you know that consuming or taking fish oil can have benefits on the overall fitness and health to you? For instance, taking the right amount of mega-3 fatty acids are incredibly important. They have many powerful health benefits to your body and brain which can significantly help to your overall fitness and health. When the words oils and fats are mentioned, health-conscious individuals tend to run for cover. What they fail to realize is that there are good fats and bad fats. Complete avoidance of intake of oils and fats would actually be detrimental rather than beneficial to their health. The truth about fish oil. Essential fatty acids must always be part of our daily diet, without them, we take one step closer to our deaths. Essential fatty acids are divided into two families, omega-6 EFAs and omega-3 EFAs. Although there are only very slight differences to distinguish the two groups of essential fatty acids from each other, studies have revealed that too much intake of omega-6 EFAs can lead to inflammation, blood clotting and tumor growth. The good news, however, is that the opposite is true for omega-3 EFAs. Omega-6 EFAs can be found in vegetable oils while Omega-3 EFAs can be found in fish oils among other foods. Omega-6 vs. Omega-3 Physicians and scientists are of the same opinion that the cause behind increasing cases of heart disease, hypertension or high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, premature aging and certain kinds of cancer is none other than an imbalanced intake of Omega-3 and Omega-6 EFAs. As mentioned earlier on, omega-6 EFAs can be found in vegetable oils. This includes but is not limited to corn oil and soy oil, both of which contains high amounts of linoleic acid. Omega-3 EFAs on the other hand can be found also in marine plankton and walnut and flaxseed oils. It should be significant to take note that fatty fish and fish oils contain eicosapentaenoic acid EPA and docosahexaenoic acid DHA, fatty acids that have been observed to provide many benefits to the human body. In the early 1970s, a study on Greenland Eskimos have revealed that one of the major reasons why they rarely suffer from heart diseases is because of their high-fat diet mainly composed of fish. The two essential fatty acids, EPA and DHA, are also helpful in preventing atherosclerosis, heart attacks, depression and various forms of cancer. Fish oil supplemented food have also proven to be useful in treating illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, Raynaud's disease and ulcerative colitis. Other benefits of fish oil. There are a lot more illnesses and situations in which intake of fish oil has proven to be significantly beneficial. Making the heart healthier. The heart is inarguably one of the most important parts of our body and having an unhealthy heart means having to suffer a rather limited lifespan. Naturally, it's in our best interests to keep our hearts happy and healthy and one way of doing that is eating food that contains fish oil. In Athens, Greece, for instance, a study was made to show if there was a direct relationship between high fish diet and inflammation of blood vessels. The results revealed that those who ate more fish than the others had a lower level of C-reactive protein and interleukin-6, factors that are commonly used to measure likelihood of blood vessel inflammation. These benefits remained even when the various risks associated with high fish diet were taken into account. Fish to become thin. In Perth, Australia, a study had revealed that fish consumption can be used against hypertension and obesity. Researchers of the University of Western Australia have discovered that a weight loss diet which includes a regular amount of fish consumption can be quite effective in reducing blood pressure and improving glucose tolerance. Fish oil to combat asthma. People suffering from respiratory problems like asthma tend to be perceived as unfit and unhealthy. 
They should now be pleased to learn that certain studies have revealed the benefits of fish oil for asthma-burdened individuals. Statistics show that approximately 20 to 25 percent of children today suffer one form of asthma or another at a certain point in their lives. And certain evidence reveals a regular diet of food with high linoleic acid content as the reason behind it. Researchers of the University of Wyoming conducted a study by subjecting a number of children to a high fish diet while others continued with their regular diet. Results revealed that the participants who ate more fish were less prone to asthma attacks and were able to breathe more easily as well. Consult your nutritionist now. Nothing is good when consumed or used excessively but complete avoidance of a particular food type is equally harmful as well. Ask your nutritionist for the right amount of fish intake for your age and health status. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. If you've been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, it is crucial for you to seek medical treatment. This is the first step to recovery. Anxiety disorders include medical conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder, agoraphobia, and panic disorder. When you talk to your doctor about your conditions, he or she will probably recommend certain talk therapies, in which you work with a therapist and cognitive behavioral therapy to overcome your disorder. You may also be recommended to take specific medications. However, there are also a number of other therapies that you can consider to help you overcome your anxiety disorder. If you are interested in oral medications, there are a number of supplements that may be able to help with your anxiety. Supplements are generally more natural than the chemicals found in medications, so your body may be less likely to react to them in an adverse way. However, it is important to remember that supplements can still be dangerous if abuse. Common supplements that can be used to treat anxiety disorders include passion fruit, passion flower, kava, valerian root, St. John's wort, hops, chamomile, magnesium, and glycine. Your doctor can instruct you taking these supplements in a safe way. If you have very low anxiety symptoms, you can also work by yourself to combat the development of full-blown anxiety disorders. First, get a proper diet. This will include all the nutrients your body needs to stay active and healthy. Reduce the amounts of caffeine and sugar you ingest to help with anxiety. Also, make sure that you are getting both sleep and exercise. This can help you manage stress more readily. If you believe you may be developing an anxiety disorder, trying to use stress management skills is very important. Many people also advocate that alcohol is a great tool for combating anxiety. Typically, patients with anxiety disorders feel stimulated, so alcohol, which is a depressant, can really help you to calm down. However, the disadvantage to this is that alcohol also can make you become intoxicated and anxiety is sometimes found in conjunction with depression, which alcohol will only cause to get worse. Therefore, this is usually not a good option, unless your doctor recommends it. Techniques like hypnosis, virtual reality use, acupuncture, and meditation can also help patients deal with anxiety. While these alternative treatment options do not help everyone, they may be able to help you. Be sure to ask your doctor about all treatment options available so that you can make the best choices for your body. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living. Do you know that colon cancer is highly treatable when discovered early? And do you know its signs and symptoms? Continue viewing on so you will know the basic signs, symptoms and how this can be treated through natural home remedies if discovered in an early stage. Colon signs and symptoms may include changes in bowel habits, blood in your stool, persistent cramping, gas or abdominal pain. 
Since colon cancer can grow for years without causing any symptoms, it's best to get regular colon cancer screenings. Most cases of colon cancer begin as small, non-cancerous benign clumps of cells called adenomatous polyps. Cancerous tumors found in the colon or rectum also may spread to other parts of the body. Cancer of the colon and rectum colorectal cancer, is a malignant tumor arising from the inner wall of the large intestine. If signs and symptoms of colon cancer do appear, they may include changes in bowel habits, blood in your stool, persistent cramping, gas or abdominal pain. Since colon cancer can grow for years without causing any symptoms, it's best to get regular colon cancer screenings. Almost all men and women age 50 and older should have a colon cancer screening. Screening tests can help prevent colorectal cancer by finding pre-cancerous polyps so they can be removed before they turn into cancer. For normal risk individuals, screening tests begin at age 50 and the preferred approach is a screening colonoscopy every 10 years, an alternate strategy consists of annual stool test for blood and a flexible sigmoidoscopic exam every 3 to 5 years. Special screening programs are used for those with a family history of colorectal cancer. Colonoscopic surveillance, also called screening colonoscopy, needs to be available at more frequent intervals for individuals at high risk for colon cancer, for instance, those with a personal history of colorectal cancer or adenomatous polyps, family history of colorectal cancer, non-hereditary polyposis, colorectal cancer, or a predisposing condition such as inflammatory bowel disease. Since your genes cannot be changed, if there is a family history of colon polyps or cancer, a colonoscopy should be performed to remove the polyps before they become malignant. In the area of prevention, researchers are looking at the effects of curcumin, found in curry, resveratrol, found in red wine, ginger and the Mediterranean diet on the growth and development of colon cancer. Recent research suggests that a high-fiber, low-fat diet plays a role in prevention, how great a role it plays is unclear. Although the exact cause of colorectal cancer is not known, it is possible to prevent many colon cancers through diet and exercise. It is important to manage the risk factors you can control, such as diet and exercise. A detox program, in most cases, shall include a mental shift in attitude towards diet, improving nutrition, removing toxins, returning the desired flora in your internal system, maintaining a balanced pH level in the body and improving the overall mind and body relationship. Diet plays an important role in preventing the development of colon cancer. Diets high in fat and low in fruits and vegetables, such as those that include red meat, fried foods and high-fat dairy products, may increase the risk of colorectal cancer. A body cleanses diet, is a diet that aims to clean and remove harmful toxins from your body. A well-known detox diet for your body is the increasingly popular lemon detox diet, which incorporates a number of ingredients and requires you to consume a drink of these ingredients once every morning, then drinking water with a hint of lemon juice throughout the day. Generally, a healthy and safe detox diet will not require you to starve yourself, and it contains highly nutritious food that can help to boost your metabolism. While you are doing your colon cleanse, make sure you are getting plenty of sleep and exercise. Exercise is believed to reduce the risk of colon cancer. Light exercise is also a good way of getting the blood circulating in your body. Gentle, no-impact exercise safe and beneficial for people of all ages. There are tons of exercise programs and plans out there, or just walking for at least 12 to 15 minutes a day is beneficial to the colon function. Detoxification is an efficient process of removing toxins from the body. The body's natural detoxification system had simply not evolved to deal with the future man-made pollutants that were to come. With the increase of toxins within the environment and foods we eat, it is not surprising that the majority of people are at a level of toxicity that is past the point that the body's own natural detoxification system can cope with. Regular detoxification will help avoid serious problems and keep you feeling better, both mentally and physically. 
Detoxification kits may be bought from health food stores, or a qualified practitioner or natural physician can recommend detox product. So, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified on the next helpful video. Remember to always go first for natural remedies of healing for a low-cost healthy living.